Good morning. <coughs> Today is Saturday, May the first, twenty twenty one. May the first is a May day. Okay, let me just see the connections here to be sure we're all connected. Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Today is our uh, regular uh, Saturday morning class, which we've been doing for a long time through our Satik space. Today is a request, another request class today. Uh, a lot of people were asking me that because of this COVID-19 and in the self-isolation and staying home, they're developing a chronic low back pain. And also, what they're talking about that the pain, chronic low back pain, is becoming more active, more acute, and they've been working harder from home. And as you heard already, the most of the companies are shifting their work from work from home. All the tech companies technological companies, they have already said the end of 2021, maybe 2022, and the way things are going, the direction it is going, looks like it is going to be a normal for work from home. So the request which I received was, can you suggest our day-to-day uh, -day activities which you can incorporate which you can incorporate in our daily life so let's start a step-by-step -step. first the asanas you can do the pranayamas you can do and the way you sleep, the way you get up, and all this will help you to get rid of your chronic low back pain. Now, we have a chronic low back pain, we have little pain, a, a little nuisance, we live with it, but then every now and then it uh, exacerbates, it becomes a very acute back pain. Now the pain, as I know in the back pain, is underlying cause is either a herniated disc or a spinal stenosis. But the cause of pain is due to the irritation of a nerve and the muscle spasm, the tightness of the muscles. The pain fibers are primarily in the ligaments and the muscles and the tightness of the muscles causes pain. So if you go to a physician, western trained physician, if you have a back pain, physician is not going to give you too much pain medication, not going to give you too much narcotics, but the physician will give you a muscle relaxant. Muscle relaxant will help you. With all of our research, all of our experience, we find out that a practice of yoga, a practice of yoga, which is a relaxation response, which is the activation of the parasympathetic tone, will take care of this problem. But it is not going to be a reductionist approach. It's going to be a holistic Holistic means the whole and it's going to be a continuous process. 
It is not going to be, I do a little bit of a back bend and that will take care. No, you have to incorporate a practice in your daily lifestyle. And that's what I'm going to show it to you. If you can do a little practice here, I will show you what you can do, a little yoga practice. And in all the yoga research has shown that for chronic low back pain, a relaxation response from yoga is the therapy. And for all the chronic conditions, the what yoga is going to help you, you will be the first is a chronic low back pain. So let's see what we can do or what we are doing. The asanas which are helpful is the first and foremost posture. The posture is called spine straight. You have to keep your spine straight throughout the whole day. Sitting in the computer, in front of the computer, hunchback, and that is going to cause more pain. I also had a serious back pain, neck pain, had a cervical radiculopathy, lumbar radiculopathy, and it is obvious because I was a surgeon, I was operating like that, and I'm operating, you know, your awareness is not in your neck or not in your back, is awareness in the patients who are operating. But I have overcome. The asanas which are going to relax your whole body and mind globally, means throughout the whole body, will be extremely effective for chronic low back pain. Asanas which is going to relax your paraspinal muscles or spinal muscles which is called your we call it erector spiny the name of the muscles paraspinal muscle relaxation will be a therapy for chronic low back pain even our pain is here a relaxation of the hip joints it is going to help you a lot getting rid of the pain the reason is, if you look at our pelvis, say the pelvis is like a bucket and it is being held on both the two sides by two hip joints which are called ball and socket joint. So if these joints are fixed, this bucket is then connected to a, a, a lumbar spine which is called the vertebral bodies and we call it the L5 S1 lumbar 5, sacral 1 joint, which all the problem starts. And if the, if the bucket is rigid, you get a lot of shearing force between the rigid bus bucket and a stick on the top of it. But if your bucket is a little bit more movable, because of the flexibility of your hip, it will adjust or it will accommodate the change and shift in that vertebral bodies which is not going to create the herniated disc and compression of your nerve roots. So think about how beautiful relaxation of the hips will be helping your back pain. Relaxation of your chest, relaxation of your neck, that means relaxation of the muscles controlling your cervical area of the spine and relaxation of the muscles controlling the thoracic area of the spine which also help you in your daily practice and getting rid of the chronic pain. So first the two situation what is a chronic low back pain and they get into a acute exacerbation. In an acute exacerbation, generally we can go back to find a reason what it caused it. Yeah, I was pulling a I was pulling a weed, I was giving a big pull, I was not careful about my back, or I was lifting up a uh, heavy object 
not paying attention to how to lift through my pelvis, not through my back. So we can find those reasons, but many a time we don't find any reason. We find a stress, both physical or mental stress, can also contribute that. So you're sleeping, I'll show you how to sleep. Let me show you a little later when you sleep. When you get up from the sleep, we generally sleep on the left side in our fetal position. And we start sleeping with a called a sleep like a baby, which is called a, a closed angle pose, Shupta Bhabdha Konasana. When you get up in the morning, let me show you the steps you can do or steps I have adopted also in my life. A, a powerful relaxing asana is when I get up in the morning, I, I will getting up from my bed, I will wait a little bit. I wait for a little short time, I wait a little bit. And then next to my bed, I have this little nightstand and I have a glass of water. You know, I have it in a, in a in a glass, you know, or I also in a copper vessels. I will sit down in a squatting pose. And again, remember, people ask me, I'm doing these poses and I got a back pain, I'm doing this, I got in my knee pain, hip pain. No, you really don't do a pose. You listen to your body signal. What is your body signal? Pain. If you're getting into a pose which is causing pain, you back off. You back off, but you stay in the pose and you have seen me. I have shown it to you so many times how to do that. In stages, we call it impossible become possible. So if you cannot sit down like this, find a posture where you can. You can be here. Stay here. Or you can put a support get a chair, get something, but once you can sit down, this is a, a therapy for your chronic low back pain. So first in the morning, this is called your Ushapan. I have a glass of water, primarily in a copper vessel, and I keep drinking in a one gulp at a time. It helps Starting with peristalsis, it helps having a bowel movement in the morning. In Ayurvedic philosophy, the back pain is due to call it vata disorder. If you have vata related condition, a vata disorder. Vata resides in the colon. A constipation or not able to empty your colon in the morning will create more vata, create more back pain. In Western medicine, you cannot, cannot connect this, but when you keep doing it, especially in a traditional system of healing, you will feel it, you will know. The day you did not have a good bowel movement in the morning, you're going to have a more back pain. A lot of neurologists ask me, what our GI tract has to do with the nervous system? We call it as a water disorder, but on the other hand, our gastrointestinal tract is a part of our nervous system. This is our second brain. There is more neurotransmitter in the gastrointestinal system than your nervous system. So able to have a good bowel movement is one helpful. Then keeping your spine straight and other, this is the posture we do and I do it every morning. Put my hands, separate my fingers. This is the way my hand gets relaxed. I do with a call a baby, baby hand, call a Adhi Mudra. Relax your wrist. Extension of the wrist relaxes it. Put your one elbow inside, other elbow inside. Slowly bring your hands in front of you. Keep your spine straight. Close your eyes and breathe out first. Then Take a deep breath in and breathe out longer than breathing in. Longer exhalation is parasympathetic and inhalation is sympathetic. The moment you initiate 
parasympathetic activation, your back pain will get a lot better. Parasympathetic outflow are from the called the craniosacral outflow. It comes from your head and neck portion and in the lower part of the spine called the sacral. The sympathetic nervous flow comes from your called thoracodorsal. Like in your chest area and the lumbar area, all the nerve fibers will come which will carry sympathetic trunk. So I'm sitting here talking for one reason because I would like you to sit down as long as you can, as long as your body allow you without any pain and with the effortless breathing. Very important, very important yogic concept. So this is an incorporating your daily lifestyle. From here, you try to get up without a support. When you get up, without a support then first thing you do or first thing I also do when I get up I go against the wall I will go against the wall and try to keep my spine straight which I call is called uh, your uh, say with me let me show it a little bit more so you'll be able to see better, which I call it a, call your Dandasan. Dandasan means your body will be like a, like a stick. So how to do that? How to do that? The first, when you, when you come, when you come to this wall, first you will put your heel, heel touching the back. When the heel is touching your back, your hips will touch, then slowly and slowly your back, your scapular area and back of your head. So in this posture, you stay here, keep your eyes closed and you breathe out longer than breathing in. Generally, I stay here between five to ten breath I'll do count of three in count of six out count of four in count of eight out my whole body slowly and slowly starts to relax especially paraspinal muscles I do it when I'm in my bathroom get up when I have my bowel movement next to I come out there is no wall I stand up slowly you can raise your hands high up and you can raise your hands high up and keep your hands in a same line as your body. Then put your hands over your head. Over your head, slowly push your elbows and see if you can touch your elbows into the wall. Hand over your head your back of your heel, your hip, your chest area, back of your head, touching the wall, hand over your head and elbows touching the wall. It's a wonderful posture to get rid of your back pain. So once I finish that, I'm still in the morning, I'm still in my room, I will go ahead and do some spinal flexibility. The way I do my spinal flexibility is I have my uh, my feet. My feet are all all you know when I stand like this, I feel pretty supported. Then I put my feet together. Once I put my feet together, I'm in a proper balancing pose. I be sure confirm that my ear, my shoulder, my hips, and my ankle is in a straight line. Same thing, I'm still in my bathroom. I'm doing it in my bathroom because I'm incorporating it in my daily lifestyle, but I'll show it to you if you have a little time to practice. From here, I start putting my hand to the back, 
call a prayer post to the back. Take my hand to the prayer post to the back, which all of you have seen how to do it. Put a prayer post and slowly go as high as possible. It keeps your chest open and the more and more you do chest opening poses, it is better and better for your chronic low back pain. Here it is. See how, how this is the way you do your, your prayer pose to the back. So standing with a prayer pose to the back, remember this thing will only take you a few minutes to do. Then you do your relaxation of your neck. Relaxation of your neck will be starting from your, you will do it as slowly and with your breathing. You breathe out first, you take a deep breath in and slowly drop your neck to the back and breathe out, slowly drop your head in the front, bringing the chin close to your chest. And do your breathing. See, you're standing tall, standing straight, your hands in the back, in a, your prayer pose to the back, and then you are doing the relaxation of your neck with your breathing. Next, there is a type of breathing, it's called your bumblebee breathing. A bumblebee breathing quiets down your mind and bumblebee breathing brings a lot of relaxation. So slowly, also there is a breathing called your Ujjayi Pranayam or call your, your resistive inhalation. Victorious breathing. You slowly, you constrict your larynx, try to breathe in, and you breathe out with a sound of a bumblebee. And let me show you to how to do it. In a, in a Ujjayi Pranayam, you breathe in. In a bumblebee breathing, you breathe out. Be sure there is no pain and you have effortless breathing. Same thing you do, breathe in. When you do this Ujjayi Pranayam, you got a little cough, which is entirely normal. Look all the way to the back without turning your shoulder. Finally rotate your neck, left to the back to the right, then right to the back to the left. Put your head down first, breathe out first, you breathe in the sound of that victorious breathing, closing your larynx. Mm. Mm. Opposite side. Mm. It'll take a very short time, it'll take much time. Then you do the lateral bending. Lateral bending of your spine. Get your hands high up, hold your arm with one hand. 
Hold with the other hand, put your hand on your head. This is the way you stabilize so you are not moving too much. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in and slowly bend your body on one side. As far as it go, it is not going in and out. In and out is an exercise. Yoga is a relaxation. So stay in this posture, breathing out longer than breathing in and stay at least between 5 to 10 breaths. Slowly come back into the middle, breathe out first, take a deep breath in to the opposite side. Remember, you are doing your neck rotation now, this is your spine, spinal flexibility. And we're doing exactly first thing in the morning, because first in the morning we are very tight. So this is the lateral bending for your spine. Now you are doing a little bit supported back bend. Supported back bend is put your hand behind in your hip area and always do the breathing. Breathing out first, take a deep breath in and slowly drop your body to the back. Don't do any unsupported back bend or a forward bend. So slowly going to the back. And then come back here. Then you go supported forward bend. Very, very important concept. Supported forward bend, you know, everybody will say, if you go to any yoga therapy practices, they will tell you, please don't do any, don't do any forward bend. It is not doing any forward bend. It is doing a called supported forward bend. Take a look at it. I do it this way every day. You put your hand first on your thigh. Push your hip to the back. Keep supporting. Here is supporting just above your knee. You're still supporting. You start in this point, you already start feeling the relaxation of your back muscles. Go below the knee. And listen to your body signal. There should be no pain and you should be able to do it with the effortless breathing. Effortless breathing means you are able to talk, you are able to sing. Slowly you can come all the way down. In stages, all breathing is possible. Hand comes all the way to the ground. Then hand comes on both of the sides. Then your head will come slowly. You can always support your back. And you can do the eyes closed. It gets a lot better and easier. By the time you do this, your back pain is almost, almost gone. In your daily routine, now you brush your teeth, Scrape your tongue and wash your nose with a neti pot. Neti pot is our, we call it a jalneti. In the same posture now, or uh, sorry, before that, with the same posture, I do another one, is a hip relaxation. The way you do it, we generally do it your, say, uh, uh, tree pose, in a tree pose, now what you do, you hold on to one of your one of your feet and slowly see if you can bring it up and bring it up, sorry, bring it up as high as possible. As high as possible and able to stay here. And let the hip go down. This will relax your hips. This is a, a, a modification of your tree pose, but it's helping your hips. 
Remember I told you the hip relaxation will help you getting rid of your back pain. You can do the other side. I'm giving you, this is a part of the asanas which you can incorporate in your daily lifestyle practice. Remember, I'm still in my, I'm still in the mind doing my morning rituals in my bathroom and I'm doing it in my bathroom. Doesn't take much time, just really a few minutes. Now you come back, now you come back, you have, now you have finished your, uh, brushing your teeth. You're doing a, doing your gel neti, neti pad. And after the neti pad, go on. If you have a little time to practice, you can practice. Otherwise, if you're going back to work, just before work, after a little food in your stomach, would like you to do sit down in a thunderbolt pose, Vajrasana. Vajrasana is a wonderful relaxer of your spine and Vajrasana is a wonderful activation of your parasympathetic tone. So in a Vajrasana what you do, first you sit down, you may sit down on a hill but keep your spine straight. If you have a little issue, you can always put a little bit of a roll. I don't like too many that yoga blocks and all these gadgets you use. But if you can have a rolled towel or a, or a rolled uh, your uh, blanket, what you can do, you can take out one layer at a time. Then go back slowly, sit down on a hill, but always your spine straight. People always ask me how long. First, it is the time your body will tell you. It's the time you can sit down without any pain, but with a little comfortable discomfort and also with a effortless breathing. Very important. Your breathing has to be totally effortless when you are doing any kind of a posture, any kind of poses, any kind of asana practice. What does it mean? It's a, any imbalance you create in a physical body, it shows up in your breath. So I'm here, I'm sitting in a thunderbolt, Vajrasana, and I can feel my back of my muscles, it used to be like a two stone sitting here, it started becoming a little bit more and more softer. Now you're back to work. And what is the work from your home these days? Oh my God, same thing that we, we are doing. Sitting in front of a computer, getting into the Zoom meetings, connecting with the offices, and it's a most dreadful postures you can ever have. So how to overcome it? Keep your spine straight. So you can have a chair. If you use a chair, you are <coughs> comfortable using a chair. Doesn't matter with handle, without handle, but keep your spine straight. And this is the minimum you can do to get rid of your chronic low back pain. Merudanda Chal, spine straight. So you are still on your daily schedule. You have done your morning rituals. You have sat down a little bit on your thunderbolt pose, Vajrasana after breakfast. Now you are sitting on a chair. So now if you sit on a chair, what you will do, let me get a chair here. This is just a simple, a simple chair. If you sit in the front of the chair, so 
feet is grounded, your spine straight, you are sitting. This is the way going to work. This is the way we will keyboard. This is the way you will be your desktop. You will be working. This is the way you will be doing your conference calls. If you go to the back of the chair, if you go to the back of the chair, keep your spine straight. Few people ask me, I have a problem, I have a problem, my feet doesn't touch the ground. Yeah, put a little folded blanket under your feet. Very nice way. So once you incorporate this, and then you have to go out, if you're driving your car, be sure driving your car with your straight spine. If you're eating, if you're eating in a dining table, be sure your spine is straight when you're sitting down. Anytime you're sitting in a chair, keep your spine straight. A guaranteed, a money back guaranteed approach to get rid of the chronic low back pain. For me, I have been using for years and years, and I've shown it to you before, and let me show it to you again, what, what, I, what I have. I have this special stool, this is called your kneeling stool. This is your kneeling stool, what you do, you sit down kneeling. Your knees are here, you're sitting here, no way you can keep your spine bend. Your spine has to be straight with the kneeling stool. So I sit down in the kneeling stool and I've been sitting in for a years and years. This is probably my third or fourth kneeling stool. I just got another new one uh, on my other office and this is the way I work. When I'm working then what we find out in our experience that the worst possible knee pain, back pain condition, even worst possible lifestyle related situation is today to your IT people, software worker, people are working in front of the computer, in the screen because they're always hunched back and looking at the screen. So what I recommend and also I do, here it is, I don't have anything in the back, I go ahead and do my prayer pose to the back. Pashchim Namaskar, put my hands to the back, I do a prayer pose to the back, I take a little time off and close my eyes and I do my breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in. And many a time sitting here also, if a little time, I will do my a neck relaxation, neck rotation with my breathing. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, then I'll do it with the right, back, left, and the front. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in. It's wonderful practice. Can you see? This is incorporating. And actually the way I find it out that I had a, I had a friend who is uh, working in front of the computer all the time and one day he texts me. Uh, I, I couldn't get him the computer. He texts me. He said AFK. AFK 20 minutes. I have no idea what the AFK means. You know, so I called him and said, what does the AFK stands for? He said, AFK stands for Away From Keyboard. It apparently is one of the nice uh, three letter words for your software people. So I said, why don't you do that? We call it a 20-20-20, actually 20-20-20 is our eyes. And I come back what the eyes does. Very important, the eyes. Eyes are actually more powerful tool for your back pain than anything else. So I said put your hand to the back, 
do a prayer post to the back and put in your screen AFK doesn't matter how long five minutes away from keyboard five minutes then in the sitting posture what you do the what the actually our ophthalmologist suggests that every 20 minutes look at at 20 feet distance and gauge at 20 seconds very important gauge your eye remember if your body the whole back pain will go away when your posture is good so what do you mean by posture posture is first of all you will be practicing all the balancing poses if that's what I'm going to do also when you do the little practice we'll do more balancing poses and I will do a few laying down poses and sitting poses it's a wonderful practice for your chronic low back pain always breathe out longer than breathing in so think about our body is like a like a, a vehicle, a car, automobile. It has to run properly, drive properly. So the wheels and the tires is my feet. So both has to be equally inflated, equally functioning. We are right-handed, dominant left-handed. So practice standing on one foot. Practice standing on one foot with eyes closed. I should all the time. And then your eyes are your steering wheel. So eyes are your steering wheel, so practice your eyes. So the moment is called a tratak. It's very important. The moment your eyes are in focus, eyes are there, it brings a proper structural alignment for your body and proper relief of your pain. We mark, put a line in our finger, put a finger, and engage it and slowly bring it close to you in fact bring close to your nostril take a picture to see if your both the globes both the people are in the same distance from the tip of your nostril then sitting down I generally do it I generally put my hands still in the prayer pose to the back I just do some eye movement up down up down left right left right right up left down right up left down left up right down left up right down then rotate up right down left up right down left up left down right up left down right see these are all incorporating in our daily lifestyle but the, if you can do this people ask me where do i get this uh, where do i get this and dealing stool and see you can see the stool from the from the side what it looks like if you see the kneeling stool back is straight no way you can hunch back. Body will allow you. And the best place to get today is called Amazon.com. Okay, so now you have seen. So from now onwards, even from when you get up, when you'll be getting up, you'll be standing up. Standing up, always consciously stand up with your ear, shoulder, hips, and ankle in the straight line. Walk straight, walk with your spine straight, and say, money back guarantee. Back pain will be gone. If you have a little time to practice, we'll, we'll try to tell you practice in the morning, and practice some sitting down, sitting down postures. Sitting down posture, I said, you do some relaxation, you always do relax your hands, thumb inside and close, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. We do it all the time, breathe in, breathe out. I have done it, I have shown it to you so many times, but 
Prayer pose to the back, neck relaxation. That's a must. You can do your lower part of the leg. You relax, relax your toes, breathe in, breathe out. So this doesn't take much time, you know, it's a very short time. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Rotate with your breathing. Breathe in, breathe out. Take your one foot to the top. Put your hands, separate your toes. Take the knees. Breathe in, breathe out. Let it go all the way down. Breathe in. This is how we relax your knees and hips. Remember when your knees and hips are relaxed, your back pain will be gone. These are the things you don't understand. You know, when you have a back pain, you're always trying to do something in the back. But the back is connected with your rest of your body. <laughs> the pain is not going to go away if you just become a reductionist and pay attention only to your back. Breathe in, breathe out. And do it slowly, gently, take your time. Butterfly pose, supto, it's called Baddha Gurasana, put your feet together, slowly bring it close to you, put your hands underneath and your both the, both the knees are going to go down. Many times what I will do, I will sit down in this posture against the wall. I'll sit down in the posture against the wall. I will do my pranayama practice. When I do the, my pranayama practice with this, the hip relaxation will take care of your back pain. So try this. This is a very important asana. Closed angle pose. All right, Baddha Konasana, sitting down. And this is also very effective when you have a acute back pain. What you like to do, you like to push yourself against a wall and sit down like, let's see if you can, if you can see me here. Now I'm in a little distance, but here, now I'm in a mirror, put your body straight here and then push your body in the, in a butterfly pose, back and then do your pranayama practice. I'll show you the pranayamas you need for your back pain. Next sitting down, you do your very wonderful practice is your spinal twist. I'm going to just show it to you and you continue doing it at home one at a time. Bring your right foot close to your left thigh, right hand goes to the back, left hand comes outside your knee, hand goes to your knee. Breathe out first, take a deep breath in, slowly turn your body in the opposite side. Bring the other side, you're going to Vakrasan, very important asana. Same way, put your hand down. This is wonderful for your chronic low back pain. But this is daily practice.
So I'm showing it to you in a little bit of a in a quickly so that you can do it as a daily practice in between your work. I don't have much time. No, no. How much time you have? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. One hour is great. Supported back bend is a therapy for your chronic low back pain. What is a supported supported back bend? Means your say when you have a acute back pain. When you have acute back pain, you cannot turn, you cannot breathe, you cannot do anything. What you can do, if you can slowly, you can slowly lay down on your face down. Very important. So if you can do your face down, this you do in a daily practice also if you get an acute back pain on your face down hands on the side and slowly see if you can raise your body high up as much as possible and stay here your acute pain will start to dissolve slowly and slowly Always remember, supported back bend, that means back bend on your mat. Next you can do, you can put your elbows, this is your Makarasana, or you call a TV viewing pose. Put your chin on your both the hands, and as if you are looking at a television, and the children should all the time. In an acute back pain, you won't be able to bend your knees, but normal practice, you can do breathe out first, breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Next, on your face down, put your one hand in the top of the other hand. Put your face down, feet together, and slowly push your body and see how far you can go high up and stay in this posture. It's not getting in and out. Stay in the posture, breathing out longer than breathing in. It is a preparatory to cobra pose, but before cobra pose, you'll be able to do a little for a longer time. So come down slowly. These are all as a therapy for chronic and acute back pain. The simple baby cobra, just get up slowly, look up, try to look all the way high up and stay in this posture as long as you can without any pain and with effortless breathing. Bhujangasan, then you go to Shalabhasan, locust. Hands in the thigh, raise your both the feet high up, and stay as long as you can. This could be done in also 
in acute and chronic both the pain finally both poles of Dharurasana hold on to the level of your ankle try to get your body high up and the most relaxing asana the laying down put your hand this is called your Shakti Asana or very relaxing asana forehead on the head take your right hip joint make it at a right angle to your right angle to your body the hip joint and then knee joint right angle to your side turn your head on this side keep your eyes closed breathe out longer than breathing in Slowly bring your leg down, turn your head to the left side, do it on your, with your left hip, left hip, right angle, and left knee, right angle to your left side. Left hip, right angle to your body, left knee, right angle to your thigh. Then slowly turn around and you're laying down, you will try to practice most of the time when you are really uh, sleeping. So you're sleeping, what you can do for your back, if you can do chest expansion and for your, <clears throat> for your back, first we're laying down, you show your Chin is below your forehead and you're looking straight high up, not like high up like this. Looking high up. If you can do a little bit of a call a fish pose, matsasan. In a matsasan, you raise your chest high up, drop your head down. Or what you can do, you can put a little pillow on the chest and open up. Chest opening helps a lot in the back. Bend your knees. This is your own. Marpatasan, hands on both sides. Slowly drop both the knees on one side and turn your head looking in your hand go to the opposite side incorporate this in your bed when you are sleeping and then when you are sleeping you sleep in there like a baby, which is called your, your supine closed angle pose. Put the feet together, drop it down as much as you can, and head down. And if you need a pillow to put your head, is fine, and drop your knees down. This is the way it opens up your hip, relaxes your hip, 
and it also brings sleep. What we do in this posture, we do our breathing, we incorporate breathing out longer than breathing in. We do it about four or five times like this. Let's like say we'll breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out longer than breathing in. I'll do it four or five times, then I incorporate breath holding. I will hold my breath in a ratio of one to four is to two. Breathe, breathe out first, breathe in with a count of four in. Hold your breath with a count of 16. Breathe out to the count of eight. <laughs> eight out. Again, breathe in with the count of four in. Hold your breath to the count of sixteen. Breathe out with the count of eight out. You like to sleep in a hard surface. More harder it is, better for you. Then you turn first on your right side in a fiddle position and put your head under a folded hand. And after a short time, you turn on your left side. I've shown this thing on yoga therapy for sleep insomnia and sleep apnea. But this will sleep. If you need a pillow, you can put a small pillow and you can sleep like this. It's a wonderful way to get sleep because it opens up in your right nostril. There's a lot of physiological mechanism and I will show it to you in a little bit of a details when I do for yoga therapy for your sleep and then when you get up getting up and you'll do a little pranayama practice and the most important pranayama as I said was a exhalation longer than inhalation then sitting down the primary pranayama for chronic and acute pain is your Pastrika pranayama, bellows, active inhalation, active exhalation. It removes all the carbon dioxide from your body, brings more oxygen in. Oxygen combines with the glucose called aerobic glycolysis from carbon dioxide, water and ATP adenosine triphosphate gives you the energy get rid of your pain if there is not enough oxygen it causes anaerobic glycolysis it produces lactic acid pyruvic acid and pain producing substances initially you will be doing very slowly so you can raise your hand high up if take a deep breathe out first take an active deep breath in and when you pull it down pull it down with a called the Adhi Mudra or Balabhushti Mudra, thumb inside and close like this. Slowly and slowly you can do in a stepwise, a very slow speed, medium speed and a rapid speed. I do it in a cycle. 
I do it in a 20 slow speed, 20 medium speed, 20 fast speed, and then when I'm done with it, I'll repeat the cycles. Pain is going to run away from you. Okay. Let's do a slow 20. Medium pace 20. Rapid pace 20. This is really a pain relieving pranayama and this is also called a prano pradhan pranayama. It brings prana in your body and also it makes your lung more functional. Normally the lung has a 6 liter capacity. You need 1.5 liter to keep the lung inflated. The 4.5 liter you can exchange called vital capacity. We only breathe normally called tidal volume is only 500 cc, 0.5 liter. With this, you'll be able to breathe in and out a lot, lot more and lot easily. You also can do it a very rapid Bhastrika Pranayama without raising your hand. But remember, all the Pranayama has to be done as if it's a normal breathing. There will be no effort in it. Hands in Adhi Mudra, thumb inside and close. I do it with my eyes closed. I'll be doing it rapidly because I've been doing it for a long time, but this is effortless. So you will do the first really slowly with your effort. So talking, you're breathing, you're fine. Then you can do. faster and not a lot longer time. I do generally about two, three, four, five hundreds of them without any effort. Like this. Continue. Continue as if you're normal breathing. I'm showing it to you how to do it, so this is very important. Then you do a Kapalbhati Pranayama, you do a Kapalbhati Pranayama with a called Vayu Mudra. Take your index finger down, put your thumb in the top, this controls your pain, controls your Vata energy. Put it over your knees, close your eyes, and do the Kapalbhati Pranayama, which I have shown you to a Pranayama. Put your belly, belly button to the back and all the air will come out from your nostril. Given the time, if you have more time, you do the Kapalbhati Pranayama 20 to 50 strokes in each in each mudras. But if you are doing a very short practice for your incorporated style, this is good enough. Do it enough, do the 50, 100 times. But on this mudra, Vayu Mudra, slow one per second.
If you can carve out half an hour to 45 minutes, an hour of your time, it will be a wonderful practice to get rid of your pain. But you have seen how I incorporate it, so it is an ongoing process. There is no shortcut. Alternate nostril breathing is also the therapy. And the final therapy is your bumblebee breathing, the primary cranium. So alternate nostril breathing, also you do a hand called Dhyana Mudra or Dhyana Mudra. Tell your index finger, your thumb, close your right nostril, just close it underneath. Breathe out to your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril and breathe out to your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close your right nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. Put your index finger and middle finger in between your eyebrows. Close your eyes. Bring your concentration to the third eye. Hold the right ear low with the left hand and continue alternate nostril breathing. This is the super brain yoga. It is activating the opposite side of your brain. Total concentration. Remember one thing. Continue as long as your body will allow, mind will allow. If you continue for about five minutes to ten minutes, it will be great practice. A chronic pain has a lot of emotional issues and it's also mind related. So mind, mind is a content of your five senses. So what we do, we shut down our five senses. We create a vibration, like a vibration of a bumblebee. Our brain has the same vibration. Two vibration cancels and quiets down your mind and gets rid of most of your chronic pain. Index finger in your third eye. You can do what they call a mudra, call a shanmukhi mudra, or also you can you close your eyes, thumb close your ear, close your mouth. Breathe out through your nose first. Breathe in through your nostril. Mm. Take both the hands, keep rubbing your hands. Keep rubbing your hands when you feel the warmth in your hand. Take both the hands like a cup, put it over your eyes. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. Then massage your forehead, massage your eyes, massage your face, massage your ear, behind the ear, in front of the ear, in the ear canal. This is called an auricular branch of vagus nerve. It causes vagal activation. Bring your hand massage in front of your neck. It's called carotid sinuses. Carotid sinus also activates your parasympathetic tone. Take your hand to the back. The insertion of the two muscles, trapezius and sternomastoid muscle, which are supplied with the cranial nerve. It's a wonderful practice. You can always do chanting, ah, uma with the vibrations, with the mudras, but the most important is quieting down your mind and the mind is we call to get into a meditation. Meditation is a state of your mind where body is relaxed. Body is called sthiram sukham asana. Sthiram means stillness, sukham means happy, asana is a purpose. When mind quiets down, your body and mind is connected, you enter into a subtle body, you will be able to do the alternate nostril breathing without 
closing your nostril. Touch your index finger and thumb, both the hands, put it over your knees. Sit down comfortably, either in a chair or in the ground. And visualize. First visualize your breath. And these you do it all in silence. And I'm guiding you, so I'm talking, but you do in silence. Visualize your breath is coming through your nostril. All the air is getting filtered in the nostril. Nose is a powerful filter. Nose also is a personal air conditioner. Outside air is warm, it's going to cool it down. Outside air is cold, it's going to warm it up. Air goes on the side of the nostril, which is called turbinate. Creates a vortex. Is a jet effect and puts the air directly into your larynx, trachea, and to the lung. Visualize air is behind your throat, upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung, lower part of the lung, almost to the level of your belly button. Hold the breath there a little bit. It's called a cable kumhok. Visualize breath is coming out from the lower part of the lung, middle part of the lung, upper part, <coughs> upper, excuse me, upper part of the lung, behind your throat coming out through your nostril, outside your nose. In this focus meditation, I already started feeling the sensation at the tip of my fingers. I can start feeling the pulsation, capillary pulsation at the tip of my finger. Then visualize breath is picking up prana. Prana is a subtle energy which is, keeps us awake, alert and alive. Breath is not the prana, breath is the carrier of prana and in yogic tradition our whole body does breathing. Visualize the breath is picking up prana. Prana is coming through your nostril, behind your throat, in the lung area. The visualize prana is getting distributed throughout the whole body. Prana is going to the organ of healing. For us, prana is now going to the, for the back. We have a chronic low back pain. Prana is going to the back, causing, called pranic healing. Pranic healing is the master healing process of yoga therapy. This is also prana energizing technique you are increasing your prana, energizing your prana to do the healing. Finally, bring your awareness to your nostril, your eyes closed. You are in silence. Visualize your breathing out through your left nostril. Visualize your breathing in through your left nostril. Visualize your breathing out through your right nostril. Visualize your breathing in through right nostril. Initially, it looked almost impossible, but with the regular practice, you'll be able to do it in silence. Let's in silence, we practice for some time, and then we'll finish with our humming and cupping and Padmudra.
Slowly bring your both the hands in front of you. Touch your little finger and thumb. Separate your ring finger, middle finger and index finger. Bring it in front of your heart chakra. Padma Mudra. It connects your body and mind. Slowly bring the Padma Mudra close to your heart, the side of the soul. Yoga as a therapy is a lifestyle medicine. It controls your lifestyle related disorders, including a chronic low back pain. Incorporate the daily practice, incorporate the daily yogic routine, the Dinocharya. It will be a wonderful practice to get rid of a chronic pain. It brings your well-being. Well-being is a conscious effort for a physical, mental and spiritual wellness to live a healthy, disease-free quality life. Bring your hands in front of your heart chakra. Rub your hands, rub your hands. When you feel the warmth in your hand, if you're wearing glasses, you can remove your glasses. Take both the hands, put it over your eyes like a cup. Let the eyes take all the heat from your hand. And after that, you massage your forehead, massage your eyes, massage your face, massage your back of your ear, front of your ear, external ear canal, activation of the auricular branch of vagus nerve. Massage your carotid sinuses and the back, insertion of your sternomastoid and trapezius muscle. It's a wonderful practice just to show you how to incorporate your daily routine, daily lifestyle to control. You will never able to get rid of your chronic low back pain. It will be controlling your chronic low back pain. It will be able to live a quality life. without being suffering, without being grounded. Thank you for joining. We'll be bringing it again for the next week again. Next Saturday we'll come back with another session and we'll continue our practice every Saturday. Thank you for joining. Okay, see you soon next week.